everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Lena and I do videos about computer science, software engineering, lifestyle, technology, anything in that realm under the sun. I'm a 22 year old living in New York City. So I'm just gonna dive into today's video. It's been one that's been requested on a lot of other different videos on my channel and it's about product or project management or the role of a PM. So this video is gonna be broken down into two parts. The first is gonna be sort of explaining what a PM does, what that job looks like on a day-to-day -day basis, and how it differs from being a software engineer, which is what I am. And the second part is it gonna be about my experience being a PM. So I did have a PM internship, but why I ultimately decided to pursue software engineering instead. So diving into the first part of this video, what is a PM? A PM is a person usually on an engineering team. So maybe you work at a tech company, maybe there'll be like five or six engineers and one PM for all of those engineers. They sort of manage the process of planning out work, scoping work, how long things are gonna take, deciding which projects are most important for a team to work on, breaking down what the week by week of work is gonna look like and helping engineers decide what tasks they actually need to achieve week by week. So basically it's a big job for planning the work of the engineering team. It's not managing the engineering team. In fact, most product or project managers I know are sort of in a different line of command versus the engineering team. So engineers will usually have an engineering team lead as their managers and then PMs will have a separate PM manager manager for them, but then they're sort of partnered up so that PMs can pave the way for engineers to do their work. PMs, a large part of their job is deciding where to allocate resources depending on the goals of the company that you're in. So a lot of times these are driven by revenue, so PM's job is to figure out which projects are going to have the highest impact financially, or if the company has a different mission which isn't solely guided by revenue, it's to sort of maximize whatever is going to be the best for the company to pursue. So long story short, they basically organize and plan out the work that an engineering team will do. So now I'm going to dive into my experience as a PM. So I was a project management intern at a really large company two summers ago. So I believe this was the summer of 2018. And I was relatively new to coding and this experience is definitely not one that is the most comprehensive experience, obviously, because it was just an internship. And I definitely did not really know what I was doing. So I was just a kid getting started out in this big world, but it was definitely an informative and interesting experience and I enjoyed my time as a product manager. So when I was an intern, I worked managing, as I said before, it's not really managing, it's sort of working with other engineers and the other engineers were interns as well. So I sort of scoped out our larger project, broke it down into smaller tasks, and then had the people that were coding my project pick what tasks they wanted to do. I definitely learned a lot thinking about the big picture of this project overall, but also because because it was an internship, I felt like I probably didn't have as much work as a normal PM would have. I was only managing one project, which was the project that my peers and I were working on that summer, whereas a regular PM, I think, would be managing three or four projects, so they'd always have something different to work on. I felt a lot of times that I just wasn't really working on anything because I had done my planning and now the engineers just had to build it and basically come to me with issues or problems in what they were working on. So I would say my summer, it was very front heavy. So I spent a lot of time doing a lot of work the first few weeks of the summer because I had to plan out this whole project. And while I was doing that, the other software engineers who were going to code my project were not doing that much because we didn't have it planned. But then the tables sort of flipped halfway through and the engineers were doing a lot more work and I was kind of sitting back and watching it happen. So what we actually ended up doing that summer was since I knew how to code and they also are smart people, I feel like most engineers can be a decent product manager. Like you have some sense of what's going on usually. So they were able to help me at the beginning of the summer with the planning and then I was able to help them with the coding later on at the end part of the summer. So yeah, it was definitely a fun time. It was not a traditional PM experience. As I said, it was very mixed and I was coding at the same time and it only lasted a summer, but I had fun nonetheless. But I think that summer helped me figure out that product management wasn't the best fit for me and I didn't really want to do it in the long-term future. So now I'm gonna dive into sort of the pros and cons of product management and how I determined that the role was not the best fit for me. So I think one of the key things that I learned that summer was if you are more of a doer than a planner, so if you like to just jump into things and not really have a plan for them versus if you like to plan out your work and then sort of tackle the work, if you're the former, product management is a bad fit for you. And I'm definitely the former 
I don't like to plan too much. I find it a lot of work and I totally understand why you need to plan for things, why organizations, organization I'm part of, like general organizations always make a plan and that's very important. Just I don't really like the active work of making a plan before I do something. I'm much more eager to dive in and start trying to solve it and figure out what the issues are on the way and sort of revise as I'm going. So it's two very different approaches to sort of tackling an issue. And I think the second definitely lends itself more to software engineering because that's sort of how you approach coding problems. You just do them and then figure out what's wrong versus in product management, the stakes are much bigger, I feel like, and it's a lot more resources and time on the line. So it does matter that you do a good job up front and plan everything according to an actual plan. Another thing I found frustrating with being a product manager is that you're not actually the manager of the engineers, you're technically just their peer. So a lot of times the engineers can override you, can just end up doing things a different way that they want to do it. And you basically have to listen to them a lot of the times because a lot of the times the issues that they're coming at you with are technical and depending on what kind of product manager you are, you may or you may not have a technical background. But a lot of times because the engineers are much more in the weeds with the problems, they come up with other things that derail your plans and you sort of have to go with what they're saying. Yeah, so it's not a good role for people who like to micromanage or understand what's going on all of the time. I definitely like to be involved in the projects that I'm working on, but product management, I think it also requires you to be able to take a step back to trust the people that you're working with and ultimately rely on them for some of the decisions that you're doing. So I think that's very different than saying managing a bunch of engineers. If you're in that position, you can talk more about the technical challenges with each problem and come to a solution. I think when you're a product manager, that's not really what the role is. So there's not a lot of that type of discussion and ultimately some of the technical implications of the project will be left to the engineers, which is kind of out of your control. So that was one thing that I didn't like also, especially coming from a technical background, I wanted to be more involved in the technical side of being a PM. Another thing that product management is very famous for is having so many meetings, just constant meetings. I have a friend who's a PM and her schedule, she only has six hours of free time a week in her 45 hour work week. So it's a very meeting heavy job. You have to be a very social person. You have to enjoy talking to other people for large parts of your day and listening to them. And so if you're more of a solo worker, I think that PM is definitely not the way you should go. I feel like I'm kind of mixed, but having that many meetings, I think would definitely stress me out. What's very challenging, you're just on all the time. I think you lose a lot of the flexibility that traditionally comes with the software engineering job. And that flexibility is just because you can do your work whenever. When you're a PM, you're much more on a set schedule with your team. So you definitely have to be on at certain hours during the day. And that can be either good or bad, depending on how you look at it. So I feel like a big reason that a lot of people who are software engineers think that they want to become PMs is because they're like, you know, I like coding, but do I love it? Do I want to do this all of the time? And that was definitely an attitude that I came into my first job with. I was like, I don't know if I like coding enough to do this, you know, every single day, all of the time. But I've definitely found, at least at the company I'm at, and I think it varies depending on, you know, what problems you're working on and where you're doing those things. I found that I really enjoy coding on a day-to-day -day basis. It's fun to, you know, tackle those problems. But then, especially with software engineering, there's a healthy mix of coding, you know, helping other people, working with other people, and then going back to coding. So it's not coding for a full nine to five hours. I definitely talked to PMs who used to be software engineers who always tell me, yeah, the one downside of being a PM is that you don't get to code anymore. So I think if you like to code, you should at least stick with being a software engineer for a little bit and then maybe eventually transition. One thing that people in industry like to say is it's much easier to go from being a software engineer to a PM. Once you're a PM, it's much harder to go back to being a software engineer because you lose a lot of the technical skills that you're constantly maintaining as a software engineer. So if you're a PM for a long period of time, you probably might be a little bit behind technically. That's not to say you can't catch up, but making the transition the other way is much more challenging just because you're going to have to re-remember all of the technical things you once knew. Another thing that I wasn't so good at with being a PM is that you need to think about everything you're doing with the greater company vision at mind. A lot of times when I'm doing work, I think, okay, what do I think would be best? What do I know that customers want that I could implement? And it's very easy to get motivated by specific stories when you hear people who are saying, oh, I love your product, but I wish XYZ were different. And that's definitely a job of PM to manage those different stakeholders and things. But as a PM, you have to think of the company at large, like, 
even though this specific thing impacts some people, is it going to help the company at large? And a lot of times the answer is no. And I just find that balance very difficult to manage. And so for that reason, I wasn't such a great PM, but I think a lot of people are a much better PM than I was. There are many positive things about being a PM. I know that was largely negative, but I think the autonomy that you have to sort of create a vision for your team, I think that's very, very cool. You're sort of in control of what we work on. So you have to pick what's most important and the greater vision is up to you and only you and I think that can be very empowering and it's a much more thought heavy job I would say it's a much more difficult job I think than being a software engineer as a software engineer you just have to write code figure out the best technical way to do things I feel like it's very much more minimal in scope versus being a PM you have to think about all of these different things and be constantly weighing those so it's a much more brain power heavy job in my opinion so all in all you have to be a super organized person a super passionate person a super social person I think those are pretty pretty much the big three skills that you need to be a good PM. And those are not my strong skills. I really like hacking away at a project. I like working with people one-on-one -on, -one on technical problems. And those are much more traits of a software engineer versus a PM. So that's why I've decided to stick with being a software engineer. That could definitely change in the future. But right now, especially because I'm young, I just don't really want to lose technical skills being a PM, which is something that I'm afraid might happen. And I really like my job as a software engineer, so I don't really see a big compelling reason for me to make a transition to being a PM. But yeah, if you have been a PM in the past or you're a software engineer now or you want to be one, let me know what you think down in the comments. I'm very curious about different perspectives on this. Again, this is just my experience and it's just informed based on what I've seen and what I've experienced at places that I've worked at. So every company is different and I can't say that this is the universal experience for everyone, but this is kind of how it was for me. So I hope this video was helpful in some way and leave a comment down below. I love hearing from you and I'll see you in my next video. Video. Bye.